Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we're back working on the metal planer restoration, and I'm really excited because we're getting really close to starting to scrape this top in, get this thing really where we can move forward. I've got it all leveled up now. I've shot my ways. Everything is nice and flat, relatively speaking, but uh, we need to get some things prepped before we actually start the scraping process. And one of the things that I want to make sure that I do a little bit better job on while I'm doing some updates to this machine than what was in the original design is I want to improve the lubrication system. So, you know, you got the, what, the top that's moving back and forth on these ways. The top is about eight foot long. And the way it was originally designed is there's some little way wipers on the very ends of the, uh, of the table. And as it moves back and forth, it wipes oil down into these ways. The problem is, is that because it's such a long eight foot section there, uh, that we didn't really get great lubrication, particularly in the center of it. And we had some wear issues in the original design. You know, this machine was built in the 1880s, 1890s. I don't know exactly, but it's definitely pre-1900. And we've come a long way in our technology as far as lubrication is concerned. And while I don't want to make a whole lot of modifications to this machine and really kind of take it beyond too far of what it was originally. Doing a little bit better job on lubrication, I think, will be a very positive uh, thing for this. So what I want to do is kind of take you over here to the whiteboard, kind of show you some issues and some things I've been working with, and then kind of tell you my game plan on what we're going to do going forward. So I've kind of made a couple little drawings, and I did this really to help myself out when I was figuring things out, but I want to show you what we're dealing with. So this is uh, just a little drawing of the base of the machine. It's 10 foot 6 inches long, or 126 inches total. And in the very center of this is where the bull gear is. This is exactly in the middle. And my table up here is 8 foot 1 inches long from end to end. At least that's on the length of the ways that are up underneath it. And uh, so I, I came over here and did some, some figuring. And, and down here on the bottom, you know, if, if I take that table to a full stroke, if I have the table length set to go the maximum length on there, it's going to basically come, the end's going to hang over about 34 inches, and you'll have about 63 inches that will stay on the bed. So you got a little bit of overhang on a full stroke. And granted, we don't always run the metal planer on a full stroke. If you got a shorter piece that you're working on, you can adjust that stroke. Uh, but in the maximum stroke, this is what we'd be dealing with. Exact same thing here on the right. So if it goes off this way, 34 inches hangover, 63 inches in the middle. So I came up here back to the top and I looked and you basically got 34 inches on either end that overhangs, which leaves about 29 inches in the center that never comes off of the table. Uh, and then as far as on the base, really, uh, there's hardly any area on here, maybe a couple of inches in the very middle uh, where it would not become uncovered when it goes all the way forward or all the way back. One of the things that I want to do is actually do uh, inject some oil into those ways. And, and what my original plan was is I was going to cut some oil grooves in here. These oil grooves, you know, would have looked something like this right here. And you would have had, uh, you know, the oil coming in one area and that would allow the oil to spread out over those ways. And I was going to do that over the entire area on the bed that uh, did not become exposed. But I came up pretty quick to realize that there's really only just this little small area in there, maybe two or three inches that on a full stroke would not become exposed. So I'm still planning on putting oil grooves in here, but we're only going to do it right here in the middle. And instead of doing a long stretch, you know, we'll have an area there in the ways where there's a hole that comes in that oil will come through. And my plan is, is just to kind of do a oil groove that looks something like that, kind of like a bow tie. And the oil can come in here, it runs to the end. If it gets to the end, it actually can go up and swipe across the entire way there. Uh, that basically keeps that oil from kind of dead ending here. It has a way it can move around. And talking to some people who work on machine and design lubrication systems, that's a good way to do your ends is to kind of have a way for that oil to come back around. So we're going to do that on each of the V-ways. So, you know, you kind of got the two V-ways on either side. So we'll do this on that face, you know, in here. That's the bottom. You'll have an oil hole here. We'll cut.
cut a groove in there that looks something like that. And it'll probably be about three inches in length. Now up here on the table, you know, some people say, well, why don't you do uh, force oil in here and, and put your ways in this area. The problem I've got on the table is because it's moving back and forth. You know, I, it's, it's going to be a little more difficult to actually do a forced oil lubrication system because I'd have to have plumbing going to that from a oil pump. And uh, with that table moving back and can be doing an eight foot stroke, that just kind of creates some uh, problems. So my idea here is, is we're just going to flake this inside here uh, to put nice oil grooves in that area that doesn't come off the table. And, uh, and we'll continue to have some wipers on the ends of the table that will uh, wipe the ends as it goes and be feeding oil there as well. So basically I'll have three places that's applying oil to the table at any given time versus just the two that I had originally. This one here in the middle I think will really go a long way toward helping to keep this machine lubricated, particularly in that center section, which was really where they had the biggest problem in the past. So let's go over here to the planer and show you what we're going to do. I've located the exact center of the bed here. It's right directly over the bull gear in the middle. And um, this is where we're going to basically drill in from both sides, have a hole that comes out in the center here, and we'll do that little cross in there. And I'm just going to use a die grinder to, to put that in there. Ideally, you would mill that, but because of the angles and because there's really not a way for me to get this on a machine, it's going to be really difficult to, to mill that. I thought about using a router, but because of the way this, I'd have to block it out past this. It'd be a really long bit coming down in there to, to do that. So ultimately, we're just going to use a, a, a die grinder. Once I get these holes in here, uh, eventually we'll come in, we'll drill and tap these. I think it's going to be an eighth inch pipe fitting. I'll put a little T thing in here. We'll have some, uh, this is the actual oil piping. I'm getting all these parts from Bajor who makes oiling systems. This is actually left over from another project I did in the past, but same components. So we'll have some oil lines that will come to this and probably kind of up in the front of the planer or in the back of the planer one, I'm going to mount an oil pump and have a, a distribution center. There'll be a distribution block with some meters that meter the oil out at the proper rate. And uh, I haven't decided whether I'm going to use a mechanical lubricator where we kind of work off of the action of the table moving back and forth to pump the oil or whether I just put an electric oil pump in there. I really would like to do a mechanical system just so you don't have to remember to turn on something, but uh, uh, I haven't been able to find the, a correct pump to that I can really tap in to do that yet, so I'm still looking for that. So enough talking, let's do some work. So again, I've already found uh, the center line where I want to do this, and I've already come in here and measured uh, on the ends, the top to the bottom of the, that V groove, and just straight up and down, and I've, I've figured out where the halfway point is, and I've got a mark here. What I'm going to do is come in. We're just going to use a, a center punch, and I'm going to drill this by hand. So put a tap in there. I've got a drill bit here. This is the tubing that I'll be using and it has a 332 uh, hole in there so you can see my drill bit fits in there and that's what size I'm going to drill it with because that's the same size as the, uh, the actual inside of the pipe or the hose that we'll be using. So I'm just going to drill that and we're going to go all the way through and I'm going to do my best to keep this thing square and level but it, it really, if it's not perfect, it's not going to matter. So let's go ahead and drill that. Should be coming out any minute here. See. A little bit slipped in there. Caught as it was coming out. There we go. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get these drilled for all four um, of the holes that we'll need, two, one on each side of, the, of each of the, the two ways, four total holes. Same drill as before, or same process, I guess. I shouldn't say drill since we're using a drill. That's got that one located and my drill barely fits in there, but it fits. 
All right, we'll drill this one through as well. Great. I broke my drill bit. I'm gonna have to, I think it came out enough though that maybe I can uh, pop that out enough to grab a hold of it. Let me go get a pair of pliers. I think that'll work and I can get that drill bit out. As it was just breaking through, it snapped the drill bit. And I got me a little Allen wrench there to push that out with and ha, don't even need the pliers. Good deal and fortunately I've got extra drill bits. So hopefully uh, I won't do that again. All right, let's uh, see if I can get that drilled out all the way now. A little bit gentler coming out the end. There we go. All right, I got two more drill holes to drill and I'll do those off camera. You can kind of see what we're going for here. I just drew that in there with a Sharpie marker and I came up, had a uh, 30, 60 degree triangle and that works out just about right. That's about the length I wanted to do. So I've got that drawn in there where I want to cut that oil groove. So I just want to put in about an eighth inch groove in that pattern. And to do it with, uh, I'm just going to use a little carbide burr. Uh, I've just got this in a little Dremel tool is what I'm going to use. And I think what I'm going to do is I actually went and cut me a template here out of wood that's got that angle on there. And I can use this as kind of a template to guide my, my part up and down as I'm cutting. And um, I'm using wood instead of metal so that it doesn't dull it while it's uh, digging in there. If it gets into that wood, it ain't gonna hurt anything. So that's the game plan. Um, I did a little bit of practicing on a piece of just scrap cast iron, so I feel pretty comfortable about this. It's probably not gonna be perfect, uh, but it's gonna get that oil groove in there. Basically, just need that channel. We'll come over, scrape on top of this, so uh, it doesn't have to be just absolutely perfect. Again, ideally, you'd do this on a mill machine. We had a lot more control, but we're gonna have to freehand it. All right, let's give it a try here. I'm gonna start by just kind of going real lightly down through here. It's actually cutting pretty good. Come back the other direction now. You probably got gonna be able to see this as well. Yeah, that's working a lot better than I anticipated. All right, we'll just use this back side here to do the up and down. I'm pretty happy with that. That's actually um, cut a nice little groove in there. I may go over this a little bit more, um, get them just a little bit deeper, but 
That's probably good enough right there. All right, I'm going to continue on. I got uh, three sets of these to cut, or four sets total, three more to cut. And uh, hopefully I can get them done. Hopefully my bits will hold up. I got another or two more bits that I can use if this one starts getting dull. Uh, if this gets dull too quick, I may have to order a few more of those uh, little burrs. But I'm hoping I can get them all done. But that looks good. Well, there you go. There's the final two on the other side of the machine. And uh, just like that, we've got oil grooves in here. I'm, uh, I'm happy with how those turned out. You know, sometimes you have a job that you just dread doing because you just don't know what you're going to get into. I kind of went into this with that kind of an attitude, like, man, I just don't know how much trouble this is going to be. This turned out to be super simple. Uh, it didn't take hardly any time at all. It just kind of fell together real nicely. So uh, happy with the results. Yeah, I did get a couple little places there, like I said a while ago, outside of the lines. but. It, you know, it's oil grooves. It's not going to hurt anything. We'll scrape over that and uh, it'll be just fine. But that should, when that oil comes in there, it'll distribute it up and down the ways. So we get nice oil coverage uh, all the way up and down the ways. And uh, as that table goes past this, it should pick up that oil and help spread it and keep the center part of the ways uh, a little bit better lubricated than just doing it from the ends. And just like that, I think we're done. I think we got this part knocked out. I'm real pumped about that. And uh, next thing I need to do is get this thing cleaned up really good, get all this uh, sawdust as well as cast iron uh, fibers out of here. I need to get my table from the other room moved in here, get the gantry crane positioned over here, and uh, we're going to start scraping these ways in. Uh, we're getting really close to really getting this machine to where we can start getting it in the finish mode, which I'm excited about. Um, we got parts ordered, so I got my, my fittings and stuff ordered so that I can get all my plumbing done. Hopefully that'll be in here in the next week or two and um, really won't have to get all that done until we do the final assembly, but I'll at least go ahead and have those parts here and we can start figuring out the oiling system on here as well. Uh, like I said, I just need to do a little more homework, figure out about my, my oil pump, how I want to do that. Uh, but this is going to be a nice improvement uh, to this machine. And with that, that's going to be a wrap, guys. As always, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, comments are appreciated. And we'll catch you on the next video.